Having your own compost heap at home is one of the best things you could have as a home gardener. It's one of the biggest assets you could ever hope for in a home garden. But how do you get started with having something like this, a compost bin? We're going to be talking about this entire process so that you could start composting as well. Hello everyone, thank you all so very much for joining in. This is the Lump from the Trini Gardeners channel and I can't tell you how happy I am for this video because I've been waiting to bring this one to you all for months and I haven't been having the opportunity, the right timing to do it and it's finally here and I'm really really happy to be able to do it because today we're going to be talking about one of the most important assets. For me, it's one of the foundational parts of being self-sustainable. I always say, and you've heard me say it before, the three most important things to be self-sustainable would be rearing livestock, your own livestock, to be able to then save your own seeds and finally composting and today we're talking about the third one composting because composting is how we get the best possible the richest most organic soil that we can use in our gardens and beyond just using that in our garden for our plants it's how we recycle nutrition that came up from the earth because remember when a plant grows that what you see there the green and the brown and the fruit that is a representation of nutrition that existed somewhere before. If it grows from your ground, that nutrition came from the earth. If it grows from a container, then that came from the soil that you put into the container. The point is that that plant is a representation of nutrition. And when we take that plant, and the plant eventually dies, because in life, there's a life cycle, and at one point, it's going to die. When the plant dies, and you let it rot, you let it turn into compost, what you've done is you've allowed that nutrition that was in the form of the plant to now become in the form of something that I can now use in my garden. This here, at one point, would have belonged to one of the many, many things that I put into this compost to make it. Maybe pieces of broccoli, pieces of tomatoes, type of plants, um, old, just refused from the garden from whenever we make salads and you throw away those few extra yellow or brown leaves, all of that breaks down it ruts down and it turns into this wonderful compost and it's such an important part of your garden that i cannot tell you how important it is and that's why i've taken the time to show you all how to start your own compost bin at home with the cheapest possible materials and in a way that is going to be super super simple so that you can start composting because to compost and to create the kind of compost that we want to create which is hot composting you need to have a certain amount of mass and that is what's going to cause the compost to break down even faster so within three four five months you could start to have compost that will be great for you and your garden now i do have a video on composting itself that will show you the entire process and give you all the basics of how to get composting even if you're unable to start something like this right now but remember that it's good to start somewhere but with the intention that you're going to graduate to something even bigger and better in the future and this is that bigger better vision for me you're going to see in the video link that I put up here what I used to compost in, which was amazing because it was better than nothing. But at some point, you're going to want to create more and more compost as you garden and you want to have more and more plants. Now, the question is, why am I using these wooden pallets to create my compost bin? And there are really two reasons for it. The first one is that these wooden pallets come in at the perfect size to encourage the kind of compost that we're trying to achieve here. The thing is that, as I would have talked about in my original video that I put up on composting, is that you need a minimum of three feet across, three feet long and three feet deep, giving you a volume of minimum 27 feet so that you can get enough organic matter and have enough microorganisms moving around. And as you're chewing down on the organic matter, they're producing heat. And that's what we use to create our compost in six months and less. Now, if you don't have that, the compost is going to take even longer. Or it may not even heat up at all. And these pallets, these are three to four feet in every direction so they give us already the perfect amount of mass that's the first reason the second reason is that these wooden pallets they're one of the last items that you can get for the most part for free or very very cheap this here these all of these pieces of pallets i got them entirely free from the local hardware i just called asked them if they had any that they're willing for me to take and they said yes i just had to pay for transport i paid 50 dollars and i got six pieces of pallets and i'm just so happy about that so what you could do is talk to your local hardware talk to your local supermarket any big store that you have in your area and they're really normally happy for people to take their pallets you know that you don't go and abuse their kindness um, but for the most part they're happy to do it and they're happy to provide that service and if you have to pay for transport that's entirely fine now there are people who do sell pallets and that's fine as well because usually like for this which i got free 
hamburgers can be choosers they're a little bit uneven they're you know a little bit wobbly in some places but you know they're they were free so i'm happy so like for instance here you see it's really spacey i could have put in some more pieces of wood like how this one has a lot but i just decided to put some wire on it and that's fine i mean it was free so i'm not going to make such a big issue from it and also there's a wall behind it so how far is the compost really going to go i mean that's one of the things when you get things free you can't really choose the best of it but i'm happy but if there are companies in your area that are doing these pallets commercially and you know you're paying something for it and you find it to be good quality then feel free to go right ahead i personally would not buy pallets because i know i can get them free but if i was in a place where it's hard to get them or i have to pay for transport and people are giving me that service really good pallets and they're transporting it and i wouldn't pay more than 50 dollars for a pallet and even that is a bit much but i mean the people are allowed to choose their price for their their products and um you can get your pallets that way but in any case it's going to be the perfect size and for the most part you can get them nice and affordable the process here is super simple it's really nothing complicated at all i'm just going to get my bits of pallets i'll be using three sides of pallets today and i'm going to just be putting them in the right order lining them up here now the ground is very important because i didn't have an even ground here i ended up putting some cardboard on top of my ground just to give it a bit of evenness because in the back it was just pure rubble so like big blocks of concrete and like i don't know let me show you oh, oh. this is this is sort of this is kind of what we're dealing with in the back here so like um i if i had like a set of gravel lying around you could use gravel and just even off the ground and then put some cardboard on top of that so you're not lying the pampos is not going to be lying down directly on top of the gravel or on top of your um on top of the rubble or on top of the gravel be lined on top of the cardboard either way just find some some way to just make your ground as even as possible so that the, the sides of pallet is going to be able to fit properly and not be too wobbly i just hold any three pieces of pallet i plan to use for the compost bin you can attach this with twine something as simple as twine you can also use some cutlass wire if you have any wire lying around that's going to be your cheapest simplest options I'm going to be going with the option of a screw and a screw gun but you don't have to go all the way to there if you don't have access to it it's completely fine you just need to have something that will just keep the pallets together that's all okay so i've already started assembling i'm going to show you all how very simple and easy this is even with one of these little screw guns what i did was and i'll bring you all closer so that you can see is that i use a little drill bit and i pre-cut holes into the pallet right where i want to use it And then I pre-cut the holes into the next piece that I'll be joining in. You can't see it because the holes are on that side. And all I need to do now is with this drill gun, I'm just going to be attaching these screws on it. Now, the real reason why I did that pre-cut is because um, like this, where I am, is pretty far from where the house is. So I didn't actually have an extension to bring the drill. I could have just screwed the entire thing in all at once. So I'm just doing it like this because now I can just like take this and just straight into it. Now it's just a matter of assembling and with this is just it just makes it a lot easier makes my life a lot easier to have something cordless that i could use that's how easy it is and there we go just like that we have a compost bin i'm <clears throat> just gonna re-angle it so that it's a bit closer to the wall there we go nothing else to that no mathematics you might be wondering why the front just remains open why i didn't do a uh, entire box to put the compost in over because you've probably seen videos of people who have done their compost when it's a full square now for me i just don't agree with it just from my situation because one if i'm bringing in a, a wheelbarrow of compost produce right just like whatever i get from the garden just whatever and i bring it in bringing the wheelbarrow here 
now I can just empty the entire thing straight into the compost bin, into the heap, and then just pile it all on with, you know, just a, a shovel or um, a fork, right? A fork would be obviously better. And if I were to block the front here now, I wouldn't be able to have access to do that anymore because there would be something blocking me. So then I have to bring the wheelbarrow, take the stuff from the wheelbarrow and lift it over the top to drop it into the compost bin. That doesn't, for me, make much sense. It just makes your life a lot harder. Another thing about it is that when you leave it forward like this, like, um, not forward, but open in the front, um, even though there is enough space over here, it just allows for airflow because airflow is very, very important in your compost bin. I really want the microbes here to be well oxygenated and not have any chances of my compost bin going anaerobic because if that happens, then my compost is not going to be the best quality compost. It's not going to be good compost. I'm not going to use it if it goes anaerobic. So as much air as I can let into this area here, that's what I'm going to be doing. And then the third reason is that when I'm ready to turn my compost pile, which is what we do to keep the compost nice and aerobic, make sure those microbes are well fed with oxygen, then I'm going to have the access in the front here. If I were to cover it up, then I'll be trying to mix up this compost from above. So then you're using all that shoulder work to be able to mix your compost. You don't want to make your life hard in the garden, make it easier. Then you can spend more time on actually planting and harvesting a nice produce. So don't make your life difficult. Make your compost bin three parts in the front here if you really want. Some like Lucy or somebody's getting in, well, Lucy, or maybe lizards or whatever, trying to come into your compost bin. Then put a piece of galvanized or something temporary in the front, but I would never ever recommend that you permanently block the front of your compost pile. It's just not a good idea. I just don't think that it is. Of course, it's just my opinion, but it's a good opinion. So you should listen to it. And there you go. That's how simple it is. I'm so happy that you made it and you stuck it off for this entire video. I really hope that you're going to get composting. And if you have any further questions, feel free to message me on Instagram, TikTok, on Facebook, or even via email, gardener at gmail.com. Very, very simple. Remember, you can tag us on any of the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and follow us on any of them because you'll see more stuff coming out of our garden and we'll be able to share in this community and it's just so nice to learn and to see what each other is just getting up to and just encourage each other in the love of gardening remember as always this has been the love on the training gardeners channel reminding you to get up and get growing get up and get composting